Hi, this is Chuck from Monocoque Metalworks. Today I'm going to tell you how I glue bonnets. You know, this used to be a well-guarded secret of mine, but I've realized that there are way more bonnets in the world than I can do myself. So I might as well tell some of you guys how to do it. If this bonnet's a little funny looking, that makes sense. This is actually a Series 2 bonnet that has been converted to Series 1 with covered headlights, series one turn signals. We've removed the series, where's my finger? There it is. We've removed the series two uh, turn signal pod. So it's all series one, except it's got a big series two mouth. But the gluing part is exactly the same. Now what I've done is I've done a complete test assembly here. Um, you'll see this is a 60 pound bag of lead shot and it is holding this side down. Now, one of my things that I tell people, but I've kind of violated here, is don't force the bonnet into shape in any way because it's going to want to pull that glue apart. But this was just a very loose riding up here of this piece. And so I just need something to hold it down so that I've got a nice tight glue gap here while I'm doing the gluing. That won't cause a problem later. You'll also see I've got some wires here on the headlamp diaphragms. That is because you want this to be straight across here. And if you don't do that, as you're lining everything up, this tends to want to like bow out here quite a bit and it'll end up putting this flange here over here. You know, well, not that far, but it'll put it out here a little bit. So you don't want that. So I've got everything just the way I want it. I've got a nice even gap here, about an eighth of an inch. Um, sometimes they're closer, sometimes they're farther. Um, I will mark these flanges. You can kind of see this one here is marked a little bit. Um, and I will put a lot more marks on these and I'll pull everything off. The diaphragms will come out completely with these two flanges bolted onto them and they'll stay bolted on the diaphragm. Kind of makes a mess when you put it in and it'll smear glue in here, but that's okay. You can clean that all up. Trying to put those flanges on by themselves is a major no-no. When you put the bonnet together, you and when you're gluing and everything, you want to do the diaphragms with their flanges on first, then do the mud shield flanges, that one, and this, what we call the heater flange here. Then do these four. I usually start in the front and then do these two. I always end up doing the long one last because for some reason it has given me trouble in the past. So I kind of put it off. Um, you can see I've got some marks here on the diaphragms already and I'll, I'll put some more marks down. Um, what I am going to do next is I'm going to put tape on the bonnet and use it as an edge. I'll put the glue in and then I'll peel the tape off. Stock, they had a very messy glue job, but I just can't handle that. That's not the way restorations go now. So we give a nice clean edge of glue on these. The glue we use, here's another secret, is this 3M Marine Adhesive. It is the 4200 in black. Do not use the 5200. You will never get it apart if you have problems, and when it dries, it cracks. This is just like the original stuff, and it's the same color. It's got just the right strength. Do not use panel adhesive. So many guys have thought, oh, I'm going to use the modern panel adhesive. That'll just work great. Major nightmare. I'm not even going to get into what the problems that causes. You see, I've got my acetone out, I've got a whole roll of paper towels, I've got a 10 pack of these blue nitrile gloves and like another maybe six or eight. I hope that's enough. You can easily go through 20 rubber gloves on this job because you typically have to take them off and do a cleanup between every flange. Um, here, as you can see, I have done a lot of bonnets with my trusty cheap caulk gun here. I mean, I must have done 20 or 30 bonnets with this. Um, it's got a lot of the adhesive on it, and there's a good reason for that. This stuff is going to be everywhere when the job is done. I'm a little neater than I used to be, but it makes a big mess. So I'm going to get ready now. I've got to tape these off and mark them and then take them all off. I'll do another video here and kind of splice it onto this so you see what's next. 
Uh, that's it for part one. Okay, so real quick, now I've wiped this all down and I have taped, you see I've, I've marked here, where, where, where we go? right here, I put these marks in here to tell me what level to go to. Now, if you can go down a little further once you get the glue in there, that's okay, but you don't want to go bananas because then all your four, you know, your four pieces in here might be at different levels. And right now I've got these all set to kind of the same eighth inch. You want that to be uniform. Um, what I didn't mention before, you might note that, or you should note that I have put a good quality etch primer everywhere the glue is gonna go because I have found that the glue will stick better to well etch primed metal than just bare metal. But this is sandblasted metal, so you'll probably be all right. The only time I've ever had an adhesion problem with this glue is when I didn't prime and I didn't sand, I forgot to do anything, and I was dealing with a flange that had been run through a planishing hammer, so it was like a mirror on the, you know, it was like chrome on the underside, and after I took the bonnet apart for priming with epoxy, it sat around and one of the pieces popped off the wing because it was under pressure a little bit. Otherwise, no, no adhesion problems with this whatsoever. So you do want to get a little etch primer down. Now what I've done next is I've put a two inch wide piece of tape here. This is the 3M blue tape with the little green writing. It has this stuff called edge lock. You got to get that. Don't get some other cheap version of the blue tape. And I am now going to put a piece of one inch in here. I'm going to put it right in here and I'm going to lay it off this a little bit. So I get a little bit of an angle here when I, when I do my gluing and that way after I get the glue smeared in there I can pull that one inch piece up without screwing this all up and I'm going to have newspaper and stuff taped in here too. All right that's the end of part two. Okay oh wait a minute this isn't working right. Okay I have now put in the one inch tape and you can see I have stood off here by a little bit because as you can see there's a gap and so you want to be able to have like a little 45 degree angle down there because the adhesive will shrink a little bit it doesn't shrink like crazy um, but it will shrink a little bit and so you want to you want to just stand off a little bit and if the gap is wider you want to stand off a little farther Usually I stand off just under an eighth of an inch. Um, you can see down here where the gap was wide up here, I'm farther away. Where the gap is real tight down here, I'm down there. Those little wrinkles are stock. They always have those. Um, and so oh, I, what I will do now is I will pull the diaphragms out with these two flanges remaining on the diaphragm. And I will pull all four of these flanges out. I will pull this heater flange out, but I will leave this flange in place. And when it comes time for me to do this flange, I will put a tip on the adhesive and I will pump it under. It's kind of a pain, but it's better than taking this all apart and trying, because that flange is on the back of this one and the front of this one, and then you undo that, and sometimes there's tension. One thing I did want to mention is this stuff, um, can die on the shelf and harden up in the tube. And so what you wanna do is keep it in the refrigerator. And this is in a plastic bag. I just pulled this out of my refrigerator a couple hours ago. This is a tube that I used halfway and taped up so that it would seal it from the air, put it in this bag and put it in the refrigerator. I have about a 50-50 success rate on being able to use them on the next bonnet. So we'll see what happens when I open that. It takes about a tube and a half to do a bonnet. Do not start the job without four tubes at your disposal because you don't want to get rolling on this and then open a tube and find out it's hardened and uh, you're sunk. So buy four tubes, send two back if you're just doing one. All right, let's move on to removing the flanges and starting to put the glue on. Okay, I am ready to start gluing. As you can see, I've put some paper down here that I got from the craft shop next door. Usually I use newspaper, but I forgot to bring some over here today. Um, the diaphragms are out, and all the flanges are out except for that one over there. 
Uh, the diaphragms are over here. They've still got their little wires on them and the kinks are gonna put them exactly where they were before. Um, this is gonna look really OCD here, but these are the bolts and washers and screws that hold everything in. And I've lined these up by flange. I actually have never done this before, but this is a good idea because usually I throw all this stuff in a pile here and I'm just rooting through it. Um, which is tough to do when you've got rubber, you know, blue nitrile gloves on your hands covered in this adhesive. Uh, this is what we call our assembly hardware. You can see it's been used many, many times. These aren't even the right oval washers. I think these are used for toilets, actually, but I've got thousands of those sitting around. Um, these are original screws. That are, some of them have been sandblasted and some of them haven't. But you can see they've all got the adhesive and primer and all of that all over them because things get very messy and you're about to see that. Um, I have opened up the glue that I used half of last time and given it a little test smear on here. Came out a little stiff at first because it's still a little cold from being in the refrigerator but it's okay you can see how it's shiny and smeary and what you really want to see oh see <laughs> i just stuck my fingers in it but that's what you want to see actually see how um it's got what i was going to show you is see this little tiny smear there and I'm, i got it on my fingers see how see that that's what you want because you see that? You're gonna wanna smear this in to the edge after you put it down and then pull that tape up. So this glue's looking real good. If you open one of these up and it's not like that, don't use it. It's already started to harden up. So I've got everything laid out here. I've got tons of paper towels. Start with a full roll of paper towels, 20 of these gloves, have a gallon of acetone ready we've got a nice little plunger thing there um and you're all taped up you've got your your stuff down here i mean you could wipe you could scrape off the glue after the fact but it's just a lot messier so i put this down and we are going to go ahead and get started um i can't do it and film at the same time i'll try to get some intermediate things but what i'm going to do to start out see i don't have any tip on here and I'm just squeezing. It's kind of sucked back in there. See how it's coming out? It's very hard to squeeze this. You'll get quite a workout. I am going to go right onto the flange like this without any tip and go ahead and really cover that flange and then mash it down. That's how this stuff goes everywhere. So let's go ahead and get started and I will give you... Um, you know, a mid-level update. I did want to mention it has taken me two and a half hours to get this far since I did the first video and I haven't been messing around. I've been doing, I've been just working on this. It's usually all in the prep. It'll now take me about an hour to glue all the flanges and then yeah, half hour, 45 minutes to clean everything up. So let's get started. Okay, I've put a nice big bead of the adhesive onto the flanges that are bolted down hard to the diaphragm. Well, actually, those aren't bolted down quite that hard, but that's okay. And um, we are going to stick this in there, and this is going to smear out all over the place. And in the back, we're going to leave it. And in the front, we're going to smear it along that tape line and then pull the tape up. You can see I've got this held in an old vise because it takes two hands to work that caulk gun. So here we go. If I get through this without covering this foam with this stuff, it'll be a miracle. Okay, I've got the first diaphragm in. You can see it makes quite a mess. Um, I missed a little bit. This one came out great, went right where it was supposed to. Um, this one kind of landed here and it's it's very hard you always have problems up in here the, the way that i do it with keeping these on the diaphragm but believe me that's the easiest way so i ended up having to pull it back pump some in and that's where you start seeing a big mess here this is this is how you want them to look um it's got a nice see where i've pulled the tape up it's got a beautiful little seam there some is slopped over the edge but we'll clean that off with a razor blade after the fact 
Now over here, a lot is slopped over the edge, but again, that's not a concern that cleans up easily with a razor blade after the fact. This is what you want to see on the back side. I don't know how well this will show up. See a nice bead kind of glopped out there. So you know you've got a good adhesion. And I'll just show you up in here. Um, I made sure that there's enough coming through up there. Right here it's kind of touching and that's okay. It's, it's fully under there. Um, and then it's coming out here as well. So one down, I went through four gloves getting that little episode done. And now I'm gonna do the other diaphragm. One trick is you're gonna be smearing off to get this nice neat edge here. You're gonna end up with a whole bunch of this on your finger on the glove. Go ahead and come over here and just wipe that on the next one. So I kinda, kinda got all the, all the way over to here with excess from that and then I just went and put a bead on there. So now we're gonna put that in. Slow and steady wins the race. Okay, here's the other side in. This one worked out a little better, but about the same. It's, it's very tough to squeeze it in here. So, you know, don't worry about this. That's not really stuck to anything. Let it dry and then get it off later. Um, and again, anything that's slopped over, you can scrape off with a razor blade nice and neat. We usually scuff these all down because um, we take the whole bonnet apart and then epoxy prime everything and then put it all back together with finish hardware. But you must do the diaphragms first. Forgot to mention this because when you put them in, they shove these walls in. If you, if you do these first and then put the diaphragms in or even the diaphragm flanges, it's gonna shove the walls over and mess up what you've done here and it's gonna mess it up after the glue has started to dry, which is a big mess. Got to put the diaphragms in first. So they're both in now. Now we're gonna put in our heater flange, which is right over here, sitting in the vise. It's got all the gook on it left over from the smearing here. And then we're gonna pump glue under here. And then we are going to put these on. Okay, when you see the long one done, that means I have completed the gluing. So they're all in now, as you can see, I made a big mess, like I always do, because you're constantly getting glue on your fingers and then you have to, you know, you gotta wipe, wipe it somewhere. So I just wipe it all over these pieces of paper. Like I said, I usually use newspaper. All the tools have the glue on them. So they will all get wiped off with uh, heavy duty shop paper towels and acetone. That takes this stuff right off while it's wet. So you gotta do all of that right now. Um, came out pretty good. I've had better, but this came out good. Um, I've had much worse. And when it's worse, it's real bad. Because then when it goes bad, you got to take it all off. You got to wipe it all down with acetone. That takes your etch primer off and it just turns into a big mess. Um, you need to be in the right frame of mind when you do this. I was tired when I started and that wasn't good, but I was afraid to have a cup of coffee because I'd be too jittery. So um, I will probably continue this once I get this all cleaned up and uh, we'll also show you guys the whole scraping and sanding and, and how that goes. So I don't know when I'll actually get this whole video together, but um, I think this was a good thing to do to help people out. So hopefully you're learning. I know there's a lot of information in here and it's not all organized. I'm just mentioning things as I think of them, but this should help. This is how I do it, comes out really nicely. Okay, we're all cleaned up. I've wiped down all the tools over there and dragged the trash can over and pulled this all up. And of course, some of the tape sticks, especially where it's on the etch primer, it really likes to stick to that. So you gotta make sure that all gets up. Um, here are all the flanges glued. See, there's you know a little, little bit of a mess right there, but that's okay. This will all get scraped down. You can see we got nice, neat little edges. Um, 72 hours, people. Don't rush it. Uh, technically, 48 will do, but I find that a lot of guys doing it at home tend to have thicker 
glue because they don't have the ability to adjust the metal pieces as, as much as we do here. And on the real thick glue, you need more time. So 72 hours. I probably won't touch this for a week. We've got plenty of other things to do. Um, this is what you want the back sides to look like. And this is kind of what the stock ones look like, but you will find that I've pumped this in from the other side. Remember I said we don't remove that flange. It's very difficult to get that look. You know, we've gotten that here. And see over here, see how I kind of had a, a miss and then a slide in. I see this all the time on factory bonnets. See how we've got a nice bead there? Even even over, I don't know if I can, if I can get you over here. See, back in here, got a nice bead to hold that in place. Um, series twos are nice because the mouth is big. You can stick your head right in here um, without getting caught on a series one. You have the tendency to stick your head in and then once your ears go in, you can't get your head back out. So be careful. Um, there's a nice bead there for this. So we're looking real good, real good. There's a nice little bead for the heater flange. Now you'll see where this is just factory glue here. These fenders were actually in pretty good shape, but it was coming apart a little bit. And so I stuffed some new glue in there. This is always harder to do. And so we will have to dress this up and sand it a little bit. This stuff actually sands pretty well. I don't want to say sands. It, it sands off pretty well. We'll scrape this off with a razor blade here where it's on the flat surface. So there you go. Uh, next segment will show us disassembling this and cleaning up the glue. Okay, I'm back. It's been five days now that the glue has been drying and you're really supposed to let it dry 48 hours. I always give it at least 72, but we've got enough stuff going on around here that I can let it go over a weekend. And so that's what's happened. So I'm now going to take this all apart and I'm going to scrape off this top layer of slopped over glue. So you'll see what that all looks like. I sand it down a little bit and just get this real nice. And then this whole thing will be scuffed down and ready for epoxy primer. So I'll show you when it's apart and we start scraping the glue. Okay, now you can see I've disassembled the bonnet. I've left the wings bolted up. Um, we don't have the spacers on this bonnet because this bonnet is not going to have the chrome strips going down there or bumpers. It's kind of a high performance bonnet. Um, I probably mentioned this already a million times, but this is also a series two that got converted to series one. So you can still see the weld seam from these uh, conversion flanges. As you can see out here, it's all smooth. So, but now you can see what the glue looks like. It's, it's sitting in a nice bed of glue. This has been five days, so it's nice and strong and cured. You can see where I always make sure as I'm doing it, I'm getting this nice, bed of glue pushed through out the back. So I've got a full width of glue in there. Again, here was just a little touch up. Now, I mentioned earlier as I was doing it, I missed on this one. Um, this Remember, these flanges were bolted to the headlight diaphragm. When I put it in, it kind of went in on an angle like that and smeared a bunch of glue there. I see this on factory bonnets all the time. They did the same thing at the factory sometimes. So I will just leave this. Uh, you know, you could cut this and scrape it all off. It's not hurting anything. It's unseen. It's semi-correct anyway. So you can see, actually, this is an area where we had to do a lot of work. Um, so these are all ready to go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and I'm going to scrape this off with a razor blade and then sand it down. And I was going to show you a different one, but I think this is a good one to show. So I'm going to hand the video off to Brent. He's going to hold that and video me scraping it and sanding it to show you what we're gonna do with all of these. This is where it gets slopped over. Now you can see on this edge, I have, you can see the edge there because I was, I remember I took my finger and I ran it along like this. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this razor blade, I'm gonna run it along there like that, all right? And we are just gonna scrape this excess right off. 
All right, we will do more in a minute, but then I want to also show you, after I get that off, it's just got a very light, almost a stain of excess glue. Now I come along with a piece of 100 grit sandpaper, and I sand that off. And see, now here's the end. Picking up a little bit of a, of a mark in the actual flange there. See, here's the end. Sometimes you gotta like trim and scrape a little bit. All right, and now we're just gonna sand. Make sure you don't sand the glue that you wanna keep. Just kinda stay up here on this top edge of the metal. Get all that glue off. Boom. See, we haven't touched this at all. And now that doesn't have that shiny look anymore because it's all dusty, but I will wipe this down with a wet rag before we're done. So there you go. That's what that looks like. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna scrape off this excess glue with a razor blade and sandpaper. Now you can see, you can see the little edge there from where I've run my finger down with the rubber glove and just smeared it right along. And remember I told you we always offset it a little bit because if you get some shrinkage, you don't want it shrinking up under. And I take a razor blade, I put it on the top here and I just run it right down, holding it nice and flat against that metal. Okay, like that. Here's a little piece up front. I'm gonna take that off, come down in like that. You go through about a dozen razor blades doing this because as you're scraping along the metal edge, you will dull them up pretty quick. See, I'm not taking anything off the back or the side, just getting this top. Sometimes the little trick is you can scrape like this and that will really take that off. Look at that, beautiful, all right? Now see, I'm just doing a little scraping like that. Boom, you wanna buy these razor blades in a box of 100, so you got tons of them. All right, that's all off. Now I'm gonna take a piece of 100 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna come down along like this. You can see it's taken off some of the etch primer, but we'll put a little bit back. One trick you wanna know is that the etch primer I put that back down on top of the cured glue just to make sure my epoxy is really gonna stick. Sometimes the epoxy is a little bit more of a harder, brittler primer, although the stuff we use is nice and flexy, but you just wanna make damn sure that epoxy is gonna stick to that. Now, come out to the side there. See, I got a little bit of mess up here because I had that glue all over my fingers as I was doing this job. So I'm also gonna run the sandpaper up here like this. I mean, you don't wanna press super hard, but believe me, that puppy is glued on there. It is not coming off, all right? So now I've sanded the top, all right? All right. That one is done. Now you just gotta go along and do the rest. Okay, I have finished the scraping and sanding. I wiped it down with a wet rag. So you can see what it looks like now. We've got a nice, smooth and even amount of glue showing. It was a little messier originally from the factory, but I like it this way. Um, and there you go, that's just how I do it. Like I said, this, it's got a nice, it's always got a nice amount on the back side here. So next, what we will do, um, it gets hot and hectic when we're doing the priming and everything. So we'll probably jump to like a finished bonnet after this. But I will, see this is the, like a greenish etch primer. I will put more etch primer over this so that all the exposed glue has a little etch primer on it. And that really grabs onto the glue. And then we will go ahead and put two coats of epoxy primer on everything apart. And then we will reassemble the whole bonnet with uh, new hardware.